Time to see if we can fix you 100% today. Welcome back to another video, you guys. Don't mind the low energy. I'm a little bit tired. I kind of just woke up. I've got brand new TGV to intake manifold gaskets here. Hoping that it'll fix the problem. And I mean, even if it doesn't, it won't hurt. So uh, let's just jump right into it and get to the install real quick. wanted to show you guys what I have done so far. I'll throw you back in a time lapse in one minute. I just moved the intake manifold up and back. Um, again, in the short that I put out a couple days ago, having this unbolted definitely makes life a lot easier because you don't have to unplug everything. So you can literally just pull this right up. The surfaces don't look like they're too, too bad on the intake manifold itself. And same if you look on the TGV. Not really much, uh, well there's a little bit of gasket material there. So I mean, I can probably take that off, but Besides that, I don't really see too, too much. That is cause for a possible vacuum leak or air leak, so we'll try to start it again, and hopefully that fixes the problem, fingers crossed. And then after I'm finished up with this today, I'm probably just gonna head over to Pedro's house and uh, see what Jake's up to, because he's trying to finish up his car today. So, give you guys a little BYO build sneak peek. Manifold is completely bolted down. I just gotta go snug up all the bolts, make sure they're all tight. Uh, one thing I didn't notice until just now, which I'm a little bit frustrated about, is uh, this ground wire here is obviously broken. I didn't notice that, and I think this happened the other day when we were pulling the intake manifold. When you're working with other people, just make sure you're being careful, and if you do break something, let somebody know, and uh, just kinda go from there. Luckily, I was able to find the piece that broke off, so I just need to repin it. It's just a little bit frustrating that I have to do it. Two gaskets are on there. I double checked to make sure that there were no other leaks anywhere else and none that I could see. So fingers crossed that this was the problem. All right, it's a couple days later now. I am here, Pedro's house with the Baja. He's asleep right now, but I came to just see Jake for a little bit and just hang out. They also have the little spade connector piece thingy that I need to fix the ground wire. So I'm gonna grab that from them as well and then get back to it. This is what Jake's got going on right now. He just put a new motor in. It's a 2.5, he's got the STI turbo all the goodies that we all pretty much are running. But he's also running a bag system with manual management, so he's got a lot more work to do. I don't want to show you guys too much because he is part of BYO Builds and they're doing a whole series about it, so I don't want to spoil everything, but it's gonna be a really cool project when it all comes together. Big shout out to Jake, he made me a new ground wire. Now I just gotta cut this so that it's not extremely long. And I have some heat shrink right here so that I can just attach everything and hopefully it goes well. I'm super tired, so my voice is awful, but let's get to it. Took me an extra second because I don't have wire strippers, but I got it to where I need it, down to just a ground wire. Now I'm going to measure it up, shorten the length of this one, use the heat shrink that I have over here, and fingers crossed that everything uh, fires right up. I have both of the exposed copper wire on both ends, kind of just entangled together. This is a heat wrap or heat shrink wrap right here. I have them both in there, like entangled. And then I'm gonna put this heat shrink wrap right over it like that. Just so everyone else knows, I have never done this before. Well, like one other time for the knock sensor, but that was really it. Um, gosh, terrible angle. All right. Ah, all right, hold on, I might have to put the camera down. Ow, yeah, definitely putting the camera down, hold on. That is not pretty at all, but honestly, I hope it just works, so get this back on there and we will try to start the car one more time hopefully putting the TGV gaskets on got rid of the vacuum leak and possibly our wine and we'll fix our AFRs and I mean honestly that was really the only other problem besides the fact that it was leaking coolant from the uh, oil cooler which I tightened a hose clamp on there it was pretty much non-existent so that's all good 
The car is still currently on a stage 2 OTS map, and my battery voltage is too low to change the map right now. So I am just going to try to start it real quick to see if I can audibly hear that whining noise and check my AFRs. After that, I'm going to shut it off, and then once I have the time to charge the battery, I'll put the actual proper base map on and try it again. But, for my sake, peace of mind, and also video sake, we're going to try to start it one more time. noise was gone and AFRs actually did stay at 1470 the entire time so I don't know if maybe something's wrong with the sensor or if I actually fixed the problem but it sounded like I fixed the problem to me that's all I'm saying I didn't actually grab a jump pack or anything I let the car run for a second or two and then I just made sure that all the accessories are off and now we have enough voltage to actually put the tune on with this uh, OTS on there it was still leaning out so hoping that with that tune it corrects that Let's give her a start, see what happens. Got the gauges on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Didn't even want to start up. All right, let's try it again. Okay, well now I know it's an issue with the tune. Jesus Christ, that's loud. Hi. Happy. <laughs> so, let me, hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it off, hold on. What we ended up doing was uninstalling the access port so that the car is on the default stock factory tune. And the result is what you guys just heard. Time for a new tune. Yep. <laughs> Look. 41 PSI, where it should be. She's shaking a little bit. She's a little bit, you know, she's misfiring just a bit. Because obviously we got rid of the EVAP. We have the aftermarket fuel rails and fuel system. Bigger air, so it's gonna have a little bit of a little bit of issues. But she's running healthy. She's not trying to die. Yeah, like I could theoretically probably drive her right now. I'm not gonna do that because I'm still scared. But I could. Listen. That's that's alive. She's alive. All I need to do is just get a proper base map and hopefully I'll have it in time to go to Wicked Big Meet, which is next Sunday. I've never been before and my car hasn't really been to any big events yet, so I think it's time and Wicked Big is a Subaru meet, so I feel like that'd be pretty cool. I have a running, driving car, guys. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next video.